Pembrokeshire has a clarity about its light that is unique for me. I mean, there may be other places in the world that was like that, but as far as I'm concerned, no. There's a sense of timelessness about this place, where you, you just forget what time, you can walk somewhere, and it could be 2,000 years ago. The place, the landscape, is probably no different. And it hasn't been ruined either, you know, like so many parts of the country have. There's still places here where you can walk along the cliffs in, in the height of summer and be on your own. Now that's really quite extraordinary. It's, um, it's a very, very strong influence. I can't let go of it. I, you know, whatever I do from here on, if I moved away tomorrow, it would, it would still live with me. I couldn't leave it alone. It's just an exciting place to work, and I think the fact that there are so many artists in Pembrokeshire underlines that. Um, it does have its own problems in that to try and paint outside is, is incredibly difficult because the light changes so fast and it can be brilliant one moment and gone the next. So really, I don't paint outside often, but I do. I draw and then I make notes. And in a sense, I recreate what I feel about what I'm looking at rather than the, the, the physical aspect of the topography isn't, isn't terribly critical. But that's really the attraction. That's why it's kept me here, I suppose. And it, it certainly... Uh, changed the way I approach my work. It's changed my work completely from what I was doing before I came here. Is there one spot that you will go back to again and again and paint what you see there? Yes, a, the footpath here, for instance, I've done maybe 30 or 40 times. You know, Monet did half a dozen of them, but they leap on. I've him a long way behind. Um, I'm fascinated that a, it changes because of the light and the seasons. But of course it changes also because I see differently. And that's the thing that amazes me. My perception can, can alter. And I can look at one thing. It's not like getting up when you're feeling liverish, isn't it? And everything is grey and horrible. And everything. But the next day, if you're feeling okay, the world's wonderful. Same place. You know, what's changed? Your perception's changed. The is very important. I mean, that's... Um, <clears throat> I sing in the choir, and so do my two younger, younger daughters. Um, again, because I, I work in a very solitary way, I work in my studio, I don't want anybody around me, I don't want to be disturbed. <clears throat> I can become very isolated from people because I'm not very good socially. But singing in the choir, I sing with 20 other people who have totally different outlooks to me. They're in different areas, different people. And it's lo I love it. I enjoy it. I get more pleasure out of that almost than painting. You know, it, it's, um, it's such a contrast. And to, to have the privilege of being part of that choir and singing such wonderful music in such a wonderful building is, uh, you can't put a price on that either. Uh, so, yes, and, and plus the fact that I, I'm also a practicing Christian. So from, from my point of view, that's a very important spiritual centre as well. It's a strange thing about the cathedral. In, in a sense, to look at it, its mass and its weight and its architecture are, are fascinating in their own right. But there's something else about the cathedral that, that's even more important. That's the, the feeling tone that goes with the place. It's a very special atmosphere in there. And any painting that I, I would do inside, and I've found this a problem because it's actually figuring how are we going to put across within an architectural structure the spirit of the place. And if that's absent, it's all it is then. It's a chocolate box picture of something which means nothing. It's a spirit that means everything. So you're never sure when you're looking at the perspective of a place whether the perspective is right or wrong because it's, uh, it defies all the laws of perspective. The very building itself does that. So you can't rely on anything being right or wrong as far as perspective is concerned because it all varies so much. You know, once you accept the fact that the place is leaning every direction, it just becomes incredibly exciting that these actually are standing up without falling down, if you understand that, that's what I mean. It's, uh, it's just a lovely, lovely eccentricity of the building. When did you first come up with the idea of going out with a camera? Well, again, that's, that's curiosity as much as anything. <clears throat> Plus the fact that I was aware that there were moments 
transient moments, particularly in this, this climate, then I can't catch them. But a camera could. Now, you can try a still camera, um, but somehow the, me the mechanics get in the way, and I thought, well, maybe a video camera might be better. People have said, oh, you know, this is all little electronic stuff. It's, it's, you know, it's a bit passe or whatever. But in fact, you think, I guess if Mozart had been alive now, he'd have been using electronic music and everything he could lay his hands on. And in fact, traditionally, all artists have been innovators. And, and I think this is just another resource. You say, OK, I'm making no judgment about it at the moment, but it's something I'm going to explore. I'm interested in it. I want to see what I can do with it. Could you just lean on the bridge? Time alone will tell what it's going to work. <laughs> I don't know. But the journey's fun. look for some fish or something. That's lovely, lovely light. Great. I like that. Tell me when to move. Fine, could you, yeah, could you just sort of stand up and put your hands on the rails? instead of leaning. That's okay. That's it. That's fine. Let your body come slightly... It's back. not an end in itself. It's that merely an extra. Is it's like saying, well, okay, if I'm painting pastels today and acrylics tomorrow, I'm not giving one up against the other. I'm merely using it as another resource. It's the leap into the unknown all the time that always drags the artist on. That blank sheet of paper, where, which is, you know, that could jump in there now. Now, are you going to do the same as you did last time, or are you going to going to take a risk. It's just under the risk. I don't know how it's going to work out, but I find it very exciting, very stimulating. I think the effects that it has are largely subconscious, because I think that the, the fact that within the computer, for instance, I can generate images and change those images in a way which I'd never dream of doing, I find interesting. Now, I often will only find it interesting. I will not feel moved to do anything about that. But what it's doing, in fact, it's sticking in there. Yeah, so it's a question of saying, yeah, OK, I'll leave that, let it go. It settles, it finds its own level, and it finds its own way of expression too. Um, I think, for me, it's important that I, I'm not going there with any preconceived idea. I'm, I want to see what happens. And the only way I can do that is by letting it happen. And that's really what I'm... So if you say, what's it done for my work? I can't put a you know, a name on it. I couldn't tell you precisely what it is. I only know that my work's changing. OK, having shot the, the film of the, the bridge and the pond and saved a frame of it, I'm going to call up the file and see what we can start with on the, uh, on the computer. Um, that's the name I gave it. There we are. Now, there's Elizabeth on the bridge, reflection of the water. <laughs> now, it's not terribly interesting as an image, so what, I want to, what I'm going to try and do to it now is start to manipulate this image to give it some, get some new ideas, a fresh look at it. <coughs> so I'm going to go on to, uh, we'll, we'll start with the, uh, the hue and the saturation. I'm going to change the, the tonal levels, of the, the colour levels of the, of the things in, inside there and just preview what we've, uh, we've got. <coughs> not very interesting, either. Just keep moving. Right, and we'll saturate that a bit more and bring those colours up much, much sharper. I've now arrived at a point where you can almost... The, the, the original image has almost disappeared, but there's still the framework and the basic shape and forms there. So I quite like that as a basic idea. So I'm going to begin to do some drawing from this and um, just see what I can get from that, and then I'll feed that back in and manipulate that. So I'll go on to the next stage now, which is drawing this from the, from the screen. I'm using colour here that's, that's available to me and in the same tonal range, roughly speaking, as far as I'm concerned, as what is on the screen, although this is, not, this is a, a, a blue, not a, not a greeny sort of colour, which I'm picking up there. But as far as I'm concerned, that's, that's OK. It doesn't bother me at all. So now I'm beginning to see this beginning to take some kind of very approximate form. I'm de deliberately keeping this abstract. Um, the less, in a sense, the less detail I include in this, the freer I can be as I come to develop the idea, as long as I have the framework there. The sketch now, which, which I've completed, is a combination of what I've picked up from there, what I've retained from the original uh, image, which we saw right at the very beginning, and also what I've put into it, because I felt like doing that, because it's what I felt I wanted to do with it. Now, I'm going to put this sketch in the scanner, and we're going to bring it up on the screen. 
so, and then go to scanner. I, yeah, I see this just as a, as a wonderful new facility for, for, for me in particular. I can get instant feedback from the images I put in, I can manipulate them, I can play with them, that I, it would take me weeks in the studio, but I'd probably never do it. So I'm actually exploring areas which I'd never ever get into otherwise, and I see this not as a, as a creator of art, but as a, as a facilitator for developing art from new ideas and new, new ways of looking at things, new images. It's a very small, intimate gallery, and um, people can feel quite intimidated walking into what could look like a private house, actually, and then looking at when they find out that the paintings are actually painted by um, the person that lives here. They, it actually um, closes, closes them down, really, rather than opens them up. Wow, yes. look at that. Oh, my gosh, look at that. Beautiful colours, aren't they? Gosh, I'm glad we saw these. Look at this one. They're you wonderful. Almost, you could almost, you could you almost could, step into that. Indeed, one. you could almost be there, couldn't you? They're lovely. I'd love one of these. Then we would really remember our holiday in Wales, wouldn't we? I think my function here is actually to work as an intermediary between Peter and obviously selling the paintings. Um, whereas he can't wax lyrical about his own work um, quite as um, unselfconsciously as maybe I can. So um, I generally, when people come to the gallery, I'm, I'm in the house and available to and welcome them in. Sometimes they don't want to talk and that's absolutely fine, but other times if, if they want to open up and um, ask questions, then uh, I'm there to feed them with the information that they require. I think because we have, we, we have that contact with the, um, with the clients, people that come here, um, it means that Peter can have direct feedback. In galleries, um, gallery owners aren't that keen actually on putting together the artist with the client in order to protect their business. But I think that that feedback is actually essential for the artist. He can become quite isolated um, if, if that doesn't happen. Do you have a situation where there'll be particular paintings that you will do anything to hang on to rather than now uh, put into a show and sell? That's an interesting question, yes, because we've been tempted once, once or twice. There have been ones that have meant um, a lot to me particularly. Um, I think they all mean a lot to Peter. Um, they're, they're like his children. It was very it's very difficult for him to sell them. Um, but once we got into the swing of it, you know, kind of, the system <laughs> kept it going, really. Um, but for myself, I've got this feeling that actually by hanging on to a piece of work, it's actually saying that Peter's not going to produce or develop any more. So um, I feel it's a little bit of superstition on my part, actually. When I, when I lose faith, then I'll start hanging on to them. It's nice to see them actually being appreciated by other people. Uh, it adds a new dimension to the work. I enjoy going to other people's houses then and seeing it hung, seeing it being appreciated. It's a bit of a misnomer to say we sell here. I think I don't, you can never sell a painting to somebody. That, that, that relationship with the painting is very special. And if somebody really feels moved to buy it, then we'll provide the facilities. <laughs> <laughs> but I'd never ever want to persuade anybody to buy a painting. Um, but I think too, I think we all have to look as, as artists, uh, to, to live also, whilst we, we, we are creative, I suppose, we also still have to live in the real world. We have to pay our bills, we have to do this, we have to earn money. Um, and in this day and age, it's more and more difficult to do that. And one has to begin to look at ways of approaching the problem of living and marketing one's work and developing what you're doing. OK, John, we're all set. Peter's love of music has brought him the security of a huge commission at the new Nimbus Concert Hall near Monmouth. The hall is used as a recording studio as well as for live concerts. The acoustics are ideal for music, but visually the hall is a little stark. The owners contacted Peter and offered him the commission to change all that, with enormous panels for each wall, 
especially designed and painted for Nimbus. I would have thought that you've got three clear canvases. Oh, I don't know, 340 feet probably or something what? like that. <laughs> I'm not mathematically very terribly good, so I can't work those things out. Well, it was originally thought that this hall might be um, a, a centre for all kinds of arts and that it would be, in many ways, an ideal place for an exhibition of art. And then um, it seemed that these walls were crying out for something and Peter Daniels happened to see a photograph. Um, of, what the, of, of the concert hall empty and said, my goodness, those are absolutely wonderful spaces. Um, he came and visited a concert, talked to the trustees, and it was decided, well, creative art is what this place is about. Let's not just hang something here that's been already painted, but actually have something painted for these walls and for this space, and it'll be, therefore, a living part of the hall. It's an enormous commission. I mean, it's, it's akin to the Brangwyn Hall in Swansea, really. Of course, I don't think we'll have quite the same kinds of um, funny animals and uh, expanses of naked flesh. I mean, that's not quite what we would envisage. Uh, I think something perhaps which blends the abstract and also Peter's sense of colour, which is always so vivid, and somehow he's able to make a focus in, in, a pic, in one painting, however large the canvas, a focus on one kind of centre, and everything else swirls out from that. And so I can visualise in my mind's eye what it might be, but of course I know that when it happens I shall be always excited and drawn to new things, which P Peter's paintings always move on. And um, that's what I'm looking forward to. So Peter, how are you looking forward to it? Because it's a big challenge, isn't it? It's like having several Christmases and birthdays all rolled into one. You know, it's, it's, uh, I think any artist would be so excited about a project like this, I can't, I can't wait to get at it. It's, uh, it's intruding on my thoughts all the time. Whatever I'm doing at the moment, it's always there. Um, it's just a wonderful challenge, a wonderful space, and it's a marvellous opportunity. I just can't wait to do it. But having said that, one has to, re you know, whilst Gwaine has said that, that, yes, there is a free hand, I have to be sensitive to the needs of the space, and I think that's very important and the ambitions of the, of the, the people who have been brave enough to build it, uh, which I think uh, is extraordinary. I'm, I'm just totally excited by it. not just the fact that I'm filling the spaces with paintings, but by the whole place and its whole ambience, its whole ethos and, it, and its, its aims. There's a, a great freedom about your work. Do you... Do you object to the term abstract or, or do you welcome it? It all depends how you want to define it, you see. That, you know, what abstract? Well, the minute I start drawing anything, I'm abstracting anyway. So if we say abstract in, in terms of meaningless, then no, it's not abstract. It's based on figurative images, um, which are abstracted, of course, and, and they, are, they are also filtered through me the way I am handling the paint, the way I am involved with the paint, because the whole thing is a total process. There's, there's, there's a, a real love of, of the material, you know, the, the actual feel of the paint and its plasticity and its colour and the paper. The whole paraphernalia of painting is, is essential. You know, you don't say, well, that's OK, now it's finished. The process counts, and, and when that process is finished, that finish isn't a finish, it's a, it's a start for a new process and a new risk. And it's, it's interesting, the analogy of living here on the edge of the, the world, in a sense, on the edge between, between the land and the sea, you can let's say an analogy with a painting, because the artist lives on the edge of disaster all the time. And if, if we're not living on the edge of disaster, the painting isn't working. We're just repeating. And if you've gone over the edge, it's a disaster anyway. <laughs> but as it is, it's that tension, isn't it? That, that moment that, that keeps the artist alive and looking and working and that, that feeling going, yeah, it's, it's going, it's working, and responding to the painting, letting the painting talk back to you. And so you're actually, there's a dialogue going on all the time. And the dialogue continues when I've got so and so, nothing more I can do with that now without wrecking it. You pick it up now and you create your own dialogue and you get the whole thing moving yourself. I'm using the tissue because I, I, 
Because of the physical aspect of painting, I, I find irritating with a brush or whatever, I want to get into the painting, and this is a very, I'm in close contact with the marks that I make. And I, in a sense, often mix the paint as I go along on, on, the, on the work itself, rather than, work, you know, sort of spending time uh, seeing if, uh, mixing it in a palette or whatever. It's all too slow. It's, it's, um, it's immediacy I'm looking for, that, that speed of response, that, that sort of moment that you capture all the time. And you can't do that. I can't do that with um, taking too long with brushes and the like. The problem with the way I work is that it, to get the work that I want, which is, is to re retain its spontaneity and its lightness, uh, means I have to keep doing it over and over again. So I don't attempt to rework what I'm doing because that, that gets overworked, it gets heavy, it gets clumsy. I'll scrap it. And I'll, I'll, well, I won't scrap, I'll stick it to one side and I'll say, I'll now work from that one. And I'll keep doing that until I get to where I'm going to go. And I think, well, for now, that's all I can do with that. Maybe in three or four months' time, I'll go back and say, well, I can actually do some more. <laughs> um, so everything has got its contribution to make. So it's every point of, of, of arrival is a point of departure. So all the time, it's new, new ways to go, new ways to go. So everything that comes up that can, can contribute to that, like the computer can or, or, the, or a video camera can, I get very excited about because this is a new, a new, something new, a new point of departure, a new way of looking at things, a new way of seeing it, a new way of interpreting it, and actually, in a sense, writing it, painting it. It's a lovely situation here, um, but I mean, it's got to be said that you are a long way away from a lot of showing galleries and exhibition spaces. Has that ever posed a problem? Well, we have. Um Thought it, thought it would, but I think that it creates other opportunities that um, maybe I wouldn't, we wouldn't have even imagined. The area we're in is, is quite cosmopolitan and people tend to come here from literally all over the world. And really you don't know who's coming here most of the time because they don't, you know, they're, they're generally relaxed and um, not wearing their uniform, they don't want to say who they are. So um, we find the contacts that are made directly through this gallery actually, I think, are worth probably the dis outweigh the disadvantages of not being quite so much in in the centre, the um, considered centre anyway. <laughs> and you wouldn't change it for the world. I don't think we would. No, no, it's really got under our skin now. my work, it's absolutely useless in my gallery. It belongs somewhere else. And that somewhere else means that within, I like to feel, that what people are doing then is carrying on that creative process. Because they have to reinvent it. And they experience, they respond. So, in a way, every viewer is, is an artist. They all become part of me. We all join in and, and get involved in this, this piece of work. And that's a lovely thought, you know, that sustains me, that sort of thing, that, that that thing will carry on. As long as people are there to look at it and are interested in looking at it, then this work is going to get its own energy, its own vitality, which is totally separate from, from my intention in the first place. It carries on. It's a continuation that's marvellous. You know, these are, in a sense, this is the magic, in a sense, of, of, of good art, isn't it? We, we, we all hope that sometime in our lives we may do a painting or two, even if we're lucky, that can do that.